Today we're on Lake of the Woods. We're up here in the middle of March, which is prime time for massive big gators. And you know what? We're out of, I'm with my friend Mark Artisan. We're out of Artisan's Rocky Point. Typically in the middle of March, that's prime to be up here for, late, for a big pike, right? So this isn't typical this year. We've got massive snow cover still. Typically when you come up here, right? Yeah. You're almost <laughs> down to the ice. It's, it's late season. The pike are moving in. Usually they're in, you know, shoreline, massive flats. We're not doing that today, are we, Mark? No, we're out here on 16 mile reef. Around us, we've been catching pike out here all year long. You know, they're just, they roam this big basin and they kind of migrate to any structure like every other fish. There's tulipy out here, perch. They got plenty to eat. So all we're doing today is we're targeting, we went a little shallower. We're gonna try up on the top. We're in anywhere from 10 out to 20 feet on our last rod out there. We'll give it a try out here on pike out here on the middle. One thing nice about fishing out here, we don't catch any pike. All we gotta do is move another 300 yards and we're out in the walleye country. Catching walleye, so we got our setup. We got this a few extra holes. We can always move a little yep. bit, but like you say, if, if the pike don't cooperate, we'll go up and catch some walleyes. No, it's just a waiting game now, so. Cool. Well, typically on Lake of the Woods, when it comes to northern fishing, everybody thinks about fishing like the shallows around the shorelines, in front of the creeks, the ditches. But another good option is coming out to some of these rock reefs, whether it's up on the north side or on the angle, down at Garden, or down on the south side. Right now, today, we're out fishing on the top of 16. As you can see here, top's out at about 10 feet, and then you got pretty solid breaks all around us. What we've done today is just kind of put a few up on top and then down the base of the reef or whatever. You gotta remember there's fish, not all the fish are in the shallows, especially the northerns, like all winter long, they kind of migrate to where the bait fish are and the bait fish migrate to the structures. So if you find the structure, you can find the fish. Now we just gotta get them up through five yeah. feet of ice. Five feet of ice. <laughs> and about a foot and a half of snow. Oh, no, he's still on there. <laughs> he's shaking his head. Coming back. Sun comes out, the fish start biting, Mark. Yeah, feels good. He's coming back slow. I think he's got some weight. He's easing him back. Oh, he's, he's got that big head shake, Mark. He's getting closer. Getting closer. Got to get him up that hole first. That's a lot of ice. Oh, I see, oh, the, I see the sinker. Oh, oh my oh. God! <laughs> <laughs> big one! Look at that! <laughs> Bonus! When you're talking about fishing, one of the best walleye lakes anywhere, even when you are fishing giant pike, you've got a chance to have one of these big old golden beauties. Look at the size of her! Not what we're looking what for, but we'll take it anyway. You know what? When big walleyes are a bonus fish, I'll take that all day, bud. I got a little measuring stick let's here get, in my... Let's measure it and get her back in real quick. I don't think this is going to be a long no. enough. 24, we'll just have to guesstimate. 24, <laughs> probably 27 and a half, 28. 27 inch. You go three, so that's about 20, 28 inches. Oh, nice fish. Look at the size of I'm going to get... Get a quick shot. Do you have your camera real quick? Get a quick photo and get her back yeah, in. Yeah, let's get a quick shot and then get her back in before she starts icing up. One of those should work. And we got a flag up over there. I'm gonna get her right back in. So the nice thing about using dead bait for pike, you know, you usually figure you're going to let's get her right back down real quick. There she goes. Oh. When you're using dead bait for pike, you usually think you're gonna get a pike, right? I don't think you're going to get a walleye on dead bait. That's a bonus. <laughs> so we're using big suckers, we're using dead bait. You know that the sucker is not tripping when the, when the flag goes off. Yeah. You come over here and catch a big pike, big walleye like yeah. that. We got another flag. Let's go. Let's go get another one. <laughs> Took a lot of line while we were sitting there fighting that other one. Reel her back in yourself. Okay. See if you can feel it. Nothing? No. It was definitely a fish because it was dead bait, so. Uh uh. Oh. He hit me there at the end. Oh, you got one done still? No, it was. 
No, something struck it there. Came back and tapped it again. He took a lot of line, so he definitely was a fish. We're only in about 15, 16 feet of water, so we definitely took took some line out. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I came back and got it. Still got him? Yeah, I got him. <laughs> nice Never one. give up. Never I give up. Came, when it came back. <laughs> Don't see a head yet. Could this be a Y or a first jack? He ain't coming back. This he ain't is a coming jack, back. Man. This is a jack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Might be one of those big horses. <laughs> Don't see anything yet, bud. There's it. Oh, there's Feels a There's a nice. Watch, look at this one. Yeah! Oh, that's a fish. There you go. First. <laughs> hey, we're just talking about oh. talking about when the sun comes out, the fish start biting. Yeah, this one went off right. You know, you were fighting that walleye over there, and this one would look over, and this flag was down. <laughs> yeah. That's a nice, thick fish. There we go. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> nice. That is a, look how fat they are. You tell what they're doing, they're loading up on food before they start heading shallow to spawn. Yeah, you can see this one's getting the color of starting to be pre-spawn. They start getting that red in their fins and that's when they really start getting active. Yeah. Start putting on the weight. Get so the feed bag on. We'll get him back down and there he's gone. <laughs> nice job. We were just talking about, we just had a quick lunch. Been a little slow morning, but it, it got cloudy. Yep. And we were just talking about if we get a little bit of sun, I bet you the fish start biting. We got done eating, we poked our heads out of the, the warming shack and the sun came out, boom, flag, flag like, within five minutes yep. apart. Beautiful walleye. Huge walleyes, walleyes yeah. huge pike. You can't go anywhere else that, that I know of and catch these quality of fish in just one one little area it's yeah, super cool yeah we're just sitting out here enjoying the day i mean it's a little windy but the weather's decent enough the especially when you're catching fish like that sun's out fish and start fish start biting let's yeah. go get this down okay <sighs> yeah you got i got a circle hook hook here and you got a quick strike there you know they both work really well it's just kind of just two different ways to fish the same fish this is kind of nice because you just start reeling Yep. You don't really set the hook. You At just all. Kind of, no, you just reel and then when you get weight, they kind of rounds in and you usually catch them in the lip of the mouth or in the quick strike, you kind of got to do it the other way. You kind of got to feel for the, and then give it a strike. Another thing on these too, with, with, with pike, a lot of times pike are either typically ground by the head, but if sometimes they do ground by the side. With these double treble hooks, it's pretty much, gay, it's, it's, it's money either yeah. way because they're going to they're gonna get a hold of one of those hooks no matter what. So. They both have their purpose. The nice thing with circle hooks is you're not, the fish are not swallowing and you're not setting the hook on it. Typically, like you saw on that walleye, hooked it right in the tip of the mouth. Yeah. You usually get in the tip or the side. You t they don't swallow. It's just the nice thing about circle hooks. So as you saw, we, we caught both of those fish, the walleye and the northern, on dead bait. Yeah. But I bet you there's days you come out here that you it's not dead bait, maybe it's minnows. No, we, when we come out northern fishing, I always like to have every option available to you. I mean, the large smelt, the medium sized smelt, big sucker minnows. We even bring hot dogs out. I mean, some days, I don't know what, if they're more active, they'll go after the live suckers. If they're a little bit sluggish or that day, seem to go after the large smelt, smelt or the medium sized smelt. Yeah. But I always want to have the options out here because if you don't bring it with you, you can't fish with it. Well, I think with this front too, I think they are a little lethargic and that's why yeah. they're, hitting the, they're hitting the dead bait. So we'll get them back down there and catch a few more yeah. of these fish. This has been a blast. <laughs> Let's go. I'm not, I'm not using a traditional tip up. I mean, when you're talking about using or going after these big fish, catching a, a big fish is so much, so much more fun on a rod and reel in my opinion. So when you're talking about rod and reel, these Arctic warriors are the ticket because you, you basically are setting this up and that flag is on the line when that fish hits, it's free spooling. You can take your time getting over to the hole. By the time you get over there, you grab your rod. And with what I'm using on this line, it's a circle hook, so you don't set the hook. You just start reeling and you, the fish is hooked up. You get down about, I like to use about two feet off the bottom. You just set it in those slots. 
Bales open. You just take this line. Boom, that's it. So basically when a fish hits, it's pulling down. Your line is free spooling. It's all fish. It's, you know, you'd think that you know, can use these for walleyes, absolutely, because these are, it's a super sensitive trigger. It doesn't take much to get these, to get that flag to go, that line to free spool. As far as the best combo of rod, reel, and line for this setup and for handling big pike that I found is St. Croix's 36 inch medium heavy Avid Ice Rod, matched with a Daiwa 1000 Legalis spinning reel, spooled with 30 pound 832 ice braid. The rod has enough backbone for great hook sets, but yet good enough bend to absorb the shock of fast running of big pike with no stretch line. And check your drag often. Under icy conditions, you want to make sure it's running smooth. When you're coming up targeting these big pike, there's a few different things you obviously need to have when you're, when you're going after pike. Tip-ups is a great option. We're all familiar with the, the traditional tip-up. We've all used them growing up. But another one that I really like is the Arctic Wire. Why? Because you can actually reel these huge pike in with a rod and reel as opposed to cutting your hands with these, the DAC crown. Now when it comes to the end of your line, there's a couple options you want to look at as well. You know, a heavy fluorocarbon type leader or a titanium. These, these pike have big teeth, so they'll cut your line, so you definitely need that. A couple options when it comes to hooks, circle hook. I really like circle hooks. Why? Because you don't have to set the hook. Typically, you're not, these aren't, they're not swallowing it when you, when you start reeling. The hook typically gets hooked right in the side of the top of the mouth, so really deadly way. Obviously, you need some heavy sinkers to keep that bait down. Another option is quick set rigs. These are also awesome as well because just like it says in the back, you hook one right in the front, one in the back. Why is that? Pike typically hit the heads. Sometimes they hit the sides, so you're definitely going to hook up no matter what. You're not going to miss too many of them. And yeah, you set the hook right away. They're going to hit one of these one of these hooks and be hooked up. When it comes to baits, you're talking dead baits, whether it be Cisco, Smelt, obviously live bait. You're talking these, you're going after big pike. So you're going out using big, big sucker minnows. Something that a lot of people don't realize, but hot dogs also work for pike. And really, cheaper the better. We kind of had a short day one, and the conditions were far from perfect. But overall, with a nice pike and a surprise monster walleye, I'll take that any day. Day two conditions? Sounds like it should be a perfect pike catching type of day. No wind and sunshine. An easy jaunt to one of Mark's nearby hot spots. New spot. Yeah. As you can see, it's definitely brighter. Yesterday it seemed like we had maybe what 10 minutes of sun. And we caught two really quality fish. Yeah, not 10 minutes of sun. They just bam, bam, you know. But we tried it out on the reefs in the middle of the lake or whatever, and we just came in here to the shallows. We're just fishing the quintessential late pike fishing on Lake of the Woods. We're just fishing shoreline break in about 12 feet of water. There's a bunch of flowage, different areas right inside of us sit here that come out here. So the Northerns are getting ready to stage. So we brought our lucky dog today, so. We're ready to go. Again, bright skies, seems to be the ticket, so we'll see what happens. Mark's dog was on point waiting for the flag to pop up. Unfortunately, the first one of the day was not ours, but a group from Wisconsin staying at Arneson's Resort. The first of the morning, a true trophy pike. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 Look how fat that is, Greg. What was it, 40? What was it? 40. 41? Uh, it was over 41, probably closer to 42 and a half. 42. Yeah, we were out fishing. We're right next door to these guys, and we look over or whatever. We see them catch one. We look over again, see them catch another one. And then while we were here, they catch another one. Came over, kind of just trying to figure out what they're doing, what they're using. And... Secret, we're not going to give up today, so. <laughs> <laughs> one thing I do like, they got these, what are they, vultures? Vulture yeah. system. Vulture yeah. systems. Yeah. You can hook it up to your each tip up or whatever. So if you're in a house, if it's cold or windy or blowing, and if you don't see it, they got their electronic and they got everybody's carrying around these remotes and it tells you exactly which one works and which one goes off. But that last one was over 42 inches and 21 and a half and we'll find out what this one is. 
<laughs> Another big fish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah, my name is Greg Henskin. I'm with the uh, inventor of Vulture Systems. And what they are, they're long range sensors that uh, people use for hunting, fishing, trapping. Uh, guys use them for bank fishing. And the whole concept of them is right now this guy's an alarm because we just caught something and the sensor's armed now. So all that has to happen is flag has to go off, he goes into alarm, there's a really bright light, and then he'll uh, send out like a long range, me range message to a handheld device. Oops. So that's it right there. So we can be sitting in our shacks, like last night we had a couple go off in the middle of the night and we just run out and go get them then. So. And what did you just catch? <laughs> I caught a, what was it, 20, 41 inch, 21 pound northern. So, my biggest one ever. We've been coming out here for the last couple of years now, and uh, it's just a great place. We have so much fun out here, and uh, we leave tomorrow, unfortunately. I'm not ready to leave. Well, let's see if we can, oh, there's the eagle. Take it, take it, <laughs> come on. <laughs> As we were watching the eagle, we had an awk view set up recording a live sucker dangling under the Arctic Warrior tip-up. It was cool reviewing the footage afterwards of how it sized up the sucker before striking it. This one's got the, what do you think, a sucker mills about like that there, Mark? I think he's got it. Oh, it's it. a big sucker? Give it a whirl? Yeah, I'd give it, or no. Here we go. Let's try it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I almost took the rod out of my hand. Please tell me that thing didn't come off. Nope, he's still on there. He's coming, must be racing back to it. <laughs> yes! Feel decent? <laughs> yes, Mark. I don't know, he doesn't want to come up. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a good big one. Big one? That's a good one, I think, buddy. We are hooked up. He is going the other Hi, way. <laughs> we got the eagle over there looking at our bait, and we got a fish on this one, so. Yeah, we're filming an eagle coming in, and we. I look over, <laughs> and my rod is like just bouncing. <laughs> that's a good sign. That's a good sign when that's it goes. That's what I way. like to hear. A little drag. <coughs> oh, oh, here he comes, here he comes. Here he comes. We got You want to You coming up? I can't. Hey, uh, uh Mark, you grab these sinkers. Slide them down. Okay, there he goes. Just take them off if you can. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> not the proper technique that's, of taking split shot a, off, but that's split a little, shot, little bit but. dangerous, right? Oh, there he goes. There he goes. This is a tank. This is going to be a tank. We have been waiting all day for this. Only takes one. We got to get up the hole first, yeah. I guess, right? Big bait, big fish. Big bait, big fish. Big sucker mouth. <clears throat> Come on, baby. I don't know. It might be. I can't. You see? Yeah, I see him. You see him? Yep. Is his head stuck or what? His head stuck. Here he comes. Coming up, Here coming he up. Comes. Here he comes. Oh! oh! <laughs> Wait till you see this thing. There we go! <laughs> Buddy! Look at the size of that tank! Oh. Whoa! That's a fish. Get your head out of there. There you go. Oh my gosh! Look at this girl! Look at the size of her! Whoa! Whoa! Oh my gosh, Mark! Get the rod out of there. This is why you come to Lake of the Woods for big horses like this. Yeah, that's beautiful. Oh, look at the size of that 
gun on her. Now that yeah. is a horse. That is a horse. Yeah. That is well over 40 inches. That is, that's well over 20 pounds. Yeah, that is. <laughs> oh my God. We have been waiting all day for her and she finally showed up. And it was worth the wait, Mark. Yep. Lake of the Woods, <laughs> giant pike. Yep. It doesn't get any better than this. It does not. They're out here Woo! and there's a lot of them. Look at that thing. Holy cow. And you got it on the underwater. Look at the size. Let me tell you something. If you want quality fish like this, big gators, I only know of one spot to go. Yeah, it's Lake, Lake of, of the Woods. Lake of the Woods, they're just all over. I tell you what, and Artisans has it dialed in. They absolutely have it dialed in. Mark put us right on these things today. That's phenomenal. We, let's get her back and let's go back. Let's get some more. Here we go. Ready, Mike? Overall, a great two days with Mark at his family's resort. With unforgettable trophy pike and walleye, one thing is for sure, two days is definitely not enough.